the Capstone Hotel trend has arrived in New York City. Planning a New York vacation has become more challenging since the city's Airbnb ban. Could capsule hotels be the solution? Are they worth the money? We will stay overnight here in Kama, one of the only two capsule hotels in New York City, smack dab in the middle of Manhattan. We've been to New York many times before, but have never been able to afford to stay in Manhattan. For just $168 on this trip, we booked two capsules in Kama, steps away from Central Park. We stayed in Nab York, the only other capsule hotel in New York, just yesterday and had a great time. How will our stay in Kama compare? Let's find out. Kama has two locations in New York, one in Times Square and this one near Central Park. However, it seems like only the Central Park location has capsules. Kama Central Park has a rating of 3.5 stars on TripAdvisor, 4.1 stars on Google, and 7.6 out of 10 on Booking.com. To get here, we flew from Santo Domingo to Orlando for three hours in Spirit Airlines' not-so-comfortable seats. After a few days of visiting family, we flew to New York and spent a night in our first capsule hotel. Today, we took the subway to 103rd Street and then walked to 106th Street and our first impression of Kama Hostel was not great. A plastic tarp covered the hostel's name, which could only mean one thing, renovations. The building is four stories tall, but only floor two was fully open. Parts of floor three, the ground floor, and the entire fourth floor were being worked on. Our capsules were on the second floor, divided into two hallways, one for men and one for women. Ours were pods 205A and 205B, the only ones in the room which meant more privacy. We didn't like the room. It was small and dated, had no view, and felt cramped and utilitarian. The capsules, on the other hand, looked great. While we had a wonderful time in Nab York the day before, the capsules looked more like bunk beds. These had a futuristic style and looked like those you see on YouTube videos in Japan, which was exciting and exactly what we were looking for. The pot was spacious inside and the color mirror light made it look very cool. While the capsules impressed us at first sight, they looked somewhat worn down upon closer inspection. I took a peek at the mattress under the bedding, and to get that image out of my head, we went exploring the rest of the hotel. There's a small kitchen in the basement. It felt disorganized and uninviting. Breakfast is included in the price, but we'll pass if those are the bagels they'll serve tomorrow morning. The rooftop terrace had a great view. There was no furniture here, but that's probably because it was the middle of winter. A dining area on the ground floor doesn't seem to be in use. One of the best things about staying here is its location, so we plan to take full advantage of this. Join us in the city for one minute while we look for the best fancy New York pizza, hot chocolate and donuts. We'll be back at Kama when this timer reaches zero. Kama Central Park is located on the Upper West Side, which is more of a residential area, so we took the subway down to 78th Street on our quest to find the best donut. Many lists say Or Washers sells the best donuts. They don't look like mush, but boy, they taste delicious. As a bonus, we had this cozy snowy view. We love to walk in Manhattan, which came in handy in reaching our next location, looking for the best fancy slice of pizza. Last time we were in New York, we came to on regular pizza and it was so good, so we're happy it's still here. We just walked over an hour to get here, so let's get going. Yesterday, we tried a 99 cent slide and wanted to compare cheap versus fancy to see who wins. I had a mushroom and cherry tomato slice, while John's had pepperoni. They were to die for, but we can't pick a winner between the cheaper and more expensive slices. They both have space in New York's culinary offer. Lastly, we went to Angelina, a fancy French bakery, and paid $26 for two small cups of hot chocolate. It was painful on the wallet, but it was totally worth it. And we're back! The plan was to shower and head back out to have dinner, 
but someone left a window open in the bathroom, leaving it suitable for members of the Polar Club only. Let me give you a quick tour of the bathroom. There are three showers, they're quite big, one, two, three. There is one big sink and two toilets, one on each side. There is also a box with free travel toiletries for whoever needs it. The bathroom looks a little bit dated, but it's clean and that's what's important. Each floor has two bathrooms, one for women and one for men. We're not ashamed to say we skipped showering and went for dinner at a lovely Indian restaurant nearby called Anar. We liked the food and loved the prices. Back in our room, John took the top capsule and I took the bottom one. The inside of the pod was cozy and I could see why capsule hotels have become so popular. I thought the alarm clock was real, but it's painted on the control panel. You must insert your room key in the slot to power the capsule. There are different knobs to power the lights on and off or change its color, USB ports to charge your devices, and a small fan on the wall. We were in New York, the city that never sleeps, so naturally we went to sleep. We checked out early the following day and headed north to visit family upstate. Watch this video next to watch our stay in Nap York, a better capsule hotel alternative to Kama Central Park.